Hi, welcome to Rules Challenge. My name is Carter Maxwell. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the game Grand Austria Hotel. Now, this game has been out several years, but apparently there's a Kickstarter version that's going to be coming out, and so hopefully there'll be some new players coming along that could get some use out of a video like this. In case you're new to the show, this is basically a test of your understanding of the rules of the game to make sure you can apply what you've read in the rule book to real game situations. It also functions somewhat like a video FAQ because the examples I give are taken from the, the rules that I've found people have the most trouble with. Before we get into the rules challenge itself, there are, have been some official rules changes that I wanted to mention. Those are going to be implemented in the Kickstarter version of the game, and I think they're good changes for anyone playing the game. The first dimension would be the Operator Staff card that gives you two points for every step up the Emperor track you are at the end of the game. Now, the rule book has a note that says this card is limited to 12 points. I'm sure that was written with the expectation that the highest you could be on the Emperor track was step six because during the final Emperor scoring you have to move down that track seven steps. But there are situations at the end of the game where you could move farther up the Emperor track than just step six. So they've done away with that limitation. Now they just say basically if you're clever enough to be able to move farther up the Emperor track at the end of the game, more power to you and you get those additional points. Another change they've made is to the Egizia card. Now this is more just a fix to a misunderstanding uh, from when the rules were being written. Now you don't get a full bonus turn. It's just an extra action of an action space with dice. A couple of things that would affect, since you're not taking a full bonus turn, you wouldn't be able to take another guest card from the main board. Uh, if you've already taken the additional action where you pay uh, one krona extra to increase the number of dice on your di dice action that's limited to once per turn so if you've already done that you wouldn't be able to do that um, when you're using the egizia bonus action and another change was to the kitchen hand card people just felt it was overpowered for the price so they're increasing the price from three krona to five so let's go ahead and get started on the rules challenge For the first question, we're going to pick up the game at the start of round five. Blue has the first turn marker, so we'll start with her. Before doing anything else, Blue wants to clear up some room in her cafe, so she's going to take an additional action and move a guest to a room. The order's already been filled, so she'll clear those cubes and score the seven points. Then she'll take the reward, which is to close a prepared room. And then since this guest has a blue tablecloth, she'll also close a prepared blue room. Then she'll discard that guest card. And since turning that room to occupied completed a group, she'll go ahead and take the group bonus. For a group of three blue rooms, that's nine points. Before we got any deeper into Blue's turn, I wanted to stop and talk about one particular rule because it causes a lot of confusion. I even had in my notes, if you talk about nothing else in this video, make sure you talk about this rule. I've even seen the publisher get it wrong in the BGG forums and people continue to quote that wrong interpretation. But one of the designers, Virginio Geely, got on the BGG forums and clarified that you can take an additional action before you even take the initial action to take a guest from the main board. In this example, before even taking a guest from the main board, Blue took an additional action to move a guest to a prepared room. That was perfectly legal. As long as we're talking about the timing of additional actions, let me give you an example of how using one would be illegal. Once you take a die, you have to finish fully resolving that action before you start taking additional actions. You can't just keep working additional actions in while you're in the midst of resolving that die. All right, let's continue on with Blue's turn. And she's done with additional actions for now, so she wants to take a guest from the main board. She'll take this yellow card from the second slot that is still just zero cost. And she'll immediately refill the guest board. Then she'll take a number one die and she places the die on her turn order marker 
Now there were three dice there. She wants to actually use four dice, so she'll pay one krona to treat it as four dice. She'll take two strudel and two cake. She'll use two of the strudel and a cake to fill one guest's order, and that'll leave her with an extra cake that she just has to put into her kitchen. Then she wants to take an additional action, so she's going to pay one krona and move two cubes to another guest card. Then she wants to move this guest to a room. First she'll clear out the cubes and score the points. In this case though it's worth zero points. Then she'll gain the rewards. First one coffee cube. And then she gets to take two steps on the Emperor track. She'll discard the guest card and she'll turn a prepared yellow room to the occupied side. Despite it being just one room, that does complete a group. So for a group of one on yellow, it's one step on the Emperor track. There are a couple things we should talk about here. One is that Blue had immediately refilled the guest board. Your intuition may tell you that shouldn't be done until the player's turn is over. It should be refilled right away though. There are actions and rewards that could cause you to be able to take another guest during the same turn and you get the benefit of the board having been refilled. Another thing I need to talk about is the group bonuses. I had completed a group in this example and in the previous example I had completed a blue group even though I didn't talk about it much. If you're unsure about the graphics on your board, uh, so you're unsure what constitutes a group, as a general rule, if it's the same color and it's orthogonally adjacent, it's in the same group. So these four red would be in a group, these three blue, these two yellow, and so on. If you look closely at the board, you, you can start to tell what constitutes a group, not just by color, but by the graphic design. Notice how, like between these two blue doors, it's just a plant divider, whereas opposed to the blue and the red, it's more of a wall. And then for the floors, there's a more substantial marking on the floor between, say, a blue and a red than a blue and a blue. It might also be worth noting that when you complete a group, the reward associated with it, whether it be a blue or a yellow or a red, that does not require an additional action to take the reward. So even if you manage to, say, during Emperor scoring, complete a group, you would immediately gain the reward at that time. Purple has the number two turn order marker, so let's go ahead and move on to his turn. And he won't start out with an additional action like Blue did. He'll just go ahead and take a guest from the board and refill the board. He needs a lot of strudel and cake to fill out that new guest order. There's two, currently two ones on the board, so he'll take one of those. He needs a total of four strudel and cake to fill that order, but there were only two number one dice, so he'll pay two krona to be able to increase it to four. And then he'll take the two strudel and two cake and fill the guest order. The order is filled and it's a green tablecloth so it could be put in any prepared room and there is a blue prepared room here but purple will just hold off for now. Purple increased the number of number one dice too many times. The additional action allows you to pay one krona to increase the number of dice associated with the die you chose one time. Now we're on to Yellow's turn, and he'll start off by taking a guest from the board for zero cost and refill immediately. Then he wants to take the number six die, so he'll pay a krona for that. And there's just one out there. Then he'll pay an extra krona to treat it as two dice, and he'll use it as a number one die to take two strudel. He has a staff card that allows him to prepare a room when he takes a one or two die. So he'll pay three krona and prepare a red room on the third floor. That room came with a bonus of two 
victory points. So he'll go ahead and mark those. Then he'll take an additional action, paying one krona to move three coffee onto guest cards. And then he'll take an additional action to move a guest to a room. He'll clear the cubes off of this guest, score the four points, and then he'll gain the reward which in this case allows him to draw three staff cards and play one for free. So he's drawn three cards. He'll keep the one that allows him to score points at the end of the game for occupied yellow rooms. And he'll discard the other two. And finally, he'll discard that guest card and because it had a blue tablecloth, he'll close a blue room. That move was illegal because yellow used a staff card that is triggered when you take a number one or number two die when he actually took a six. It doesn't matter that the six he took he used as a one. What matters is what is on the face of the die you took. This affects actually quite a few staff cards in the game. For example, here's one that is triggered when you take a five. It would not be triggered if you took a 6 and used it as a 5. I should touch on a couple things that might have looked illegal but weren't. One is when yellow prepared that red room and took the two points. Sometimes people assume that those two points are only earned once you occupy the room. But no, just the act of preparing it is enough to score those two points. And the way the reward was handled on this guest card was correct also. This card tends to confuse people. You're drawing three totally new cards from the staff card deck, not three from your hand. You play one of those cards for zero cost, and you get rid of the other two. You're not putting them into your hand. Now we're on to the next turn, and it's actually yellow again because he had the tile that has back-to-back -back turns. He'll start by taking a guest card. He'll take the number two die, and there are currently two of them there. He'll use that to take one wine and one coffee and immediately place them on guest cards. He has a staff card that once per turn allows him to gain one cake, so I'll go ahead and tap that. Technically you're supposed to flip it over, but I like to just tap them instead. And he'll immediately place that cake on a guest card. Now he's going to take an extra action and move this guest to a room. He'll clear the card of cubes. He'll score the three points. He'll take the reward of three krona. And he can take two guest cards for free. He'll go ahead and claim a card. And put it into his cafe and the space just vacated. He doesn't have any more space in his cafe at the moment. So he'll just forego the second card that he could have claimed. He'll discard the guest card, and since it's a red tablecloth, he'll go ahead and close a, an, an open red room. And that was actually just a group of one that triggers a bonus of one krona. The part of that move that tends to cause questions is that yellow didn't fully implement the rewards. He took the three krona, but then only took one guest from the board. Now in this case he didn't even have room in his cafe for a second card but it's quite common for people to forego free guest cards especially late in the game when they think they won't even have an opportunity to get the guest's order filled and moved into a room. It's also common on a card like this where you get a discount for playing a staff card. Well sometimes people just won't have the money to play the staff cards in their hand with or without the discount so they'll just skip that reward. That's perfectly legal though. You're never required to take a guest rewards when you place them into a room. Next we're on to Purple's turn because he's fifth in the turn order but he's going to pass. That moves us on to Blue and she's also going to pass. Now that all the remaining players have passed and Purple's next in the turn order Purple will remove one die and re-roll the rest. And then they'll sort the dice onto the action board. 
And since purple is next in the turn order, he'll go ahead and take the next turn. He'll take a guess from the board. It wasn't quite the roll he was looking for, but he's getting a little nervous now about the dice being too depleted, so he'll go ahead and take one of these two fives. He'll use those two dice to take a two krona discount on the chef staff card. So he'll pay just one krona. The chef card allows him to take one cube of each type of food, but he doesn't have a guess right now that requires a red or brown, and he doesn't want to have to spend a krona on that later. So he's just going to wait to activate this card till a later turn. There was a lot going on in that turn, so let's talk about the illegal part first. When you play a staff card that is a one-time activation, you have to activate it at the time you put that card into play. You can't hold it for a more convenient time later. The way the passing was handled in that example was all correct, but I do need to say more about it because passing tends to give people trouble. Two questions that tend to come up when multiple players are, have passed are, how many dice do you remove? And does each player get a re-roll? After every player has either taken both their turns or passed, you remove one die, do one re-roll, and then the players that passed get to decide whether they're going to now take their regular turn or pass again. They're all working from the same re-roll. Now it's Blue's turn, and she really wants to move up two more steps on the Emperor track, so she'll get the Emperor tile bonus at the end of the round. So far, though, the dice haven't been cooperating because no fours have come up. She could take a six, but she'd have to pay a krona just to take a six and then pay an extra krona to use it as two dice. And she's hoping to avoid having to spend two krona just for this one action. So she's going to take a chance and pass again. So she'll remove one die to the garbage can, gather up the rest, and re-roll. She moves the dice back to the board. And again, they have not been cooperative. So she's going to take another chance. Remove another die, gather them up, and re-roll. This time things went a little better. She got at least one four, so she's going to go ahead and use that. She'll pay one krona to treat it as two dice. And she'll take two steps on the Emperor track. The only thing restricting how often you can remove a die and re-roll is just how many dice are remaining. Eventually you'll run out, but until then, you can keep passing and keep taking your chance on a new roll. The completion of Blue's turn ended the round, so we'll move on to the Emperor scoring now. And all three players will score points for their position on the Emperor track. Yellow gets 9, Purple 6, Blue 5. Then all the markers are moved back five spaces. And everyone is still in the yellow region, so everyone receives the Emperor Tile bonus. This tile allows a player to prepare a room on either the first or second floor for free, and then turn it to its occupied side. We'll start with yellow, and he'll use it to prepare a blue room on the second floor, and turn that over. Blue will prepare a yellow room, Occupy that one. That's Blue's fourth yellow room occupied, and she already had three blue. So that actually fulfills the requirements for a politics card. This card here is the one that requires four yellow rooms and three blue rooms be occupied. So Blue will place a marker there and score ten points. Purple only has one option because every other room on the first or second floor is already occupied. So he'll Prepare a blue room and turn that to the occupied side. That's actually just a group of one, so he'll score two points for that. The part that was illegal is that blue claimed a politics card out of turn. It requires using an additional action during your turn. You always want to keep in mind that it's a race for these politics cards because of the diminishing returns the later you are in order of claiming them. So by blue taking one out of turn, that can have significant scoring consequences. Besides the race aspect, 
Another reason claiming the politics card at the right time is important is at the end of the game, it may turn out that you don't even get an opportunity to claim it. There happens to be a C tile, in fact the one we have out right now, that has a similar effect to the B tile that we just activated. This one wouldn't even have its effect until after all the players' turns are done. So you could end up occupying a room, fulfilling a politics card requirement, but never having a chance to claim the card. By the way, no one took the penalty here, so it didn't come into play, but this emperor tile has a misprint on it. Note that the rulebook says you either lose seven victory points or must remove two unoccupied rooms from the highest possible row or rows of your hotel board. This tile shows occupied rooms. That's not correct. I forgot to write down who provided the clarification, but it's been confirmed that it's the rule book that's correct, not the graphic on the tile. And that's consistent with some of the other Emperor tiles, where if you went by the graphic on this tile, it would be a worse penalty than the similar C Emperor tile. Well, that's it for the rules challenge. If you got something useful out of the video, please be sure to give it a like, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks.